Let's start with understanding imaginary and complex numbers. But before that, we need to consider the square roots of numbers. Let's say we have the equation x squared is equal to 4, which means x is equal to plus or minus 2. Easy. But what if x squared is equal to negative 4? Since a number squared is always greater than 0, how can x squared ever be a negative number? This is where imaginary numbers come in. If we let i be the square root of negative 1, we can then write the square root of negative 4 as plus or minus 2i. This is an imaginary number, any number that contains a factor of the square root of negative 1, or i. Now we move one level up to complex numbers. All a complex number is, is a number that contains a real number, plus an imaginary number. A standard complex number looks like this, a plus ib, where both a and b are real numbers, a being the real part of the number, and ib being the imaginary part of the number. Complex numbers may not seem very useful, but in the next lesson, we will see how we can represent complex numbers in another form, which is used to model quantum computing states. We can add and subtract complex numbers pretty easily. All we do is add or subtract the real parts and the imaginary parts. Pause the video and try adding up these complex numbers. Multiplication is pretty simple as well. But we must remember that if we get i squared, that becomes negative 1, since i is the square root of negative 1. The complex conjugate of a complex number is when you take the complex number and flip the sign or negate the imaginary part. This is denoted by an asterisk. Here are some examples. One cool property of complex numbers is if we multiply any complex number by its complex conjugate, the result is always a real number. Try multiplying 2 plus 3i with 2 minus 3i and confirming this is the case. 